Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, and uh, today I have another boot review for you. And it's on one of my favorite pairs of boots probably that the military ever issued, and I'm pretty upset they don't make this exact model anymore, uh, because it was a very short-lived model. But they are still, you can still find civilian variations of them. I know Danner still makes uh, a version of these called the Crater Rim, uh, which is probably one of the better pairs of hiking boots out there, I'd honestly say. Now, I've heard a lot of very positive and a lot of very negative reviews of these boots as well. Um, and I could see why the negatives would be there, and I could also see why the positives would be there. But I've never had a problem with these boots, and I've worn a lot of shitty pairs of boots, and a lot of really, really nice pairs of boots. Um, and for your money, this this isn't a bad pair of boots. They do have some break-in time. Um, they do, uh, they could be finished a little bit better and stuff like that as far as aesthetics go and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's actually a pretty comfortable pair of boots. There's a couple little gripes that I'll get into with them. But for the most part, once you kind of actually just wear them for a little while, there's no problem. Um, but right out of the box, they can be kind of uncomfortable. Uh, but these are the uh, Combat Hiker Boots. And these came about kind of in the early parts of Afghanistan, the war in Afghanistan resulting in issues with Afghanistan's terrain and the boots that the military was fielding at the time. Now, the boots the military was fielding at the time were kind of a taller um, boot, you know, 10 inches in height was the standard, and uh, they were pretty flimsy on the sides. They didn't offer a ton of ankle support. They were designed for desert warfare, uh, so they were very thin, uh, fabric and leather uh, boots that were designed to breathe really well above anything else. Uh, and that led to a lot of ankle injuries and foot injuries in the early parts of Afghanistan because of how mountainous and rocky the terrain is. And so the army urgently put out a order for um, designs to be made to solve this issue and pretty much went to a civilian off-the-shelf hiking boot. And uh, this is what you see here. And these are made by Danner. Now, Bates also made some of these. Uh, Belleville made versions of these. A lot of the standard boot manufacturers for the military made versions of these boots. And you can still buy versions of these. And they're, they're pretty nice. I highly recommend them if you can get a pair for cheap. Now, um, they're made out of a Nubuck leather uh, upper. They have a complete full 360 rubber rand to protect the boot. Um... They have the Vibram uh, Bifida outsole, which has a very aggressive lug pattern that sheds uh, dirt, snow, and um, mud very easily. It has an aggressive, uh, as you can see there, kind of C-shaped or J-hook-shaped heel heel break there, which is what um, one of the major problems people were having were slipping. And when you're wearing a heavy pack in Afghanistan, you don't want to lose your footing. Uh, but modern, uh, the boots they were issuing... Uh, when you were walking down slopes at like this angle, uh, you would slip. And so they put this heel break in there, which is that kind of, as you can see, that J sheet, um, you know, part of the heel there at the front uh, would help catch uh, so you wouldn't slip. You wouldn't, you wouldn't slide down the terrain. It was a heel break. It would catch and it would keep you, it would keep you in place, which is a very good thing to have when you're mountain climbing. Any of you people that are, you know, experienced climbers or hikers or anything like that, know that that is a very good thing to have. Sure footing is a very um, good thing to have. Um, uh, the eyelets on these, they're stainless steel eyelets. Uh, they're just simple D-rings riveted in place. Uh, this boot is actually pretty flexible for a hiking boot. Um, it's fully Gore-Tex lined, which can make them kind of warm in hotter conditions, just so you know. Um, they do make hot weather versions of these boots, not in this color though, uh, ones that don't have the Gore-Tex in them for better breathability. So. Uh, and temperature regulation. Uh, they have a padded collar. Uh, they do have this tiny little worthless bit of a pull tab to help like get your boots on, which I don't know why they even put that on there, but they did. Um, the collar is of a leather. You can see the uh, Gore-Tex there on the inside. There's my insoles in them, but you can uh, see the Gore-Tex there. That's kind of a herringbone type fabric. Uh, there's the tag on them. This is 10 and a half regular, which is uh what I wear in US size. Um, so, 
It's a very, very, uh, a very, very good boot. They're, they're really, they're really heavy pairs of boots though too. So remember that going into it, if you're buying these, these are a quite substantially heavy pair of boots. Um, they're reinforced uh, most places. They have a pretty aggressive break-in period, and they they served the army uh, in Afghanistan for a pretty long time. Um, uh, it was kind of a choice to wear these two. You didn't really have to wear these. A lot of people are on bases. You don't see them. You see them being issued to like combat teams and outside the wire type people. Um, they're very uh, short, so they're not really. Uh, they were only uniform approved for Afghanistan and everything like that because they don't meet the standard 10 inch height uniform requirement uh, and everything like that so um, they do have a pretty uh, fine adjustability as far as it goes it's very um, top to toe uh, lace design which I like it uh, allows you to adjust especially if you want to wear multiple pairs of socks in the cold this is a very good um, early winter pair of boots I say once it gets really really cold uh, this probably aren't the best choice um, but overall, I'm actually very impressed with these. Now, my only really gripes with this boot are they didn't really... Uh, the sizing, all right, can be a bit um, narrow and long. So you might want to order a size wide and down a half size is all I got to say. Uh, they tend to run kind of long, despite that they all say they run true to size. But I own so many fucking pairs of boots, I can't believe that they run true to size. Um... But, uh, and also the right there in the back where they left this seam, okay? And the thing is, they didn't finish the seam very well. So the leather just kind of ends and it has like a tab here where it's stitched in. So when your heel is moving up and down in the back here, it rubs. And I got blisters there all the time wearing them because they, they didn't finish that seam very nice. You could see it all the way around the side of the boot here where this leather, you can see there, is kind of pulling up. And that rubs, and it moves around, and it creates a hot spot, and then eventually a blister. But the only spot that's really bothersome is actually right here in the back where your ankle rubs. There, your Achilles tendon rubs against this part right here, and it, it blisters every single time I wear these for an extended period of time. And it did that in the Bates pair I owned as well, not just the Danner pair. Um, so I wish they would have finished that seam better, but that's really the only gripe I have. And eventually, your body will just develop a callus, and it'll be fine. So, uh, which just with prolonged use, you get used to it and stuff like that. Your body grows custom to them. Uh, but overall, I'm actually very impressed with these boots. You can find them around still for 50 bucks. Um, they're not hard to find. Uh, you can find taller models too. You can find hot weather models. You can find a bunch of different versions of this boot. But this is like the original pair right here. They're kind of brown and black. Uh, but you can find them in all solid 110, 499 color if you're a big multicam fan and uh, everything like that. So um, hopefully you guys like this video. Uh, thank you so much for getting over 200 subscribers. I'll be working on some stuff I could do for the next giveaway here um, to see what I got laying around that I can give away that I have multiples of. Uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy that uh, just like you did on the first one. And... Um, Hopefully you guys like this video and you subscribe if you like this sort of thing and uh, leave any comments or questions down in the comments, uh, any additional information you have, any uh, feedback. If you want to, um, if you ever used a pair of these and you have any experience with them, leave your experience in the comments too. I'd very much like to hear it and uh, I will do my best to reply to all of those. Uh, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye.